A few yards further on, the road swung to the right by the old Pig of Lead pub and the mills nestling in Bonsol Hollow below Borlai Quarry. There was a quirky little bookshop opposite the pond in Cromford, the type of place that had vanished from most high streets, but still lurked in corners of the Peak District. Cooper could see it across the water as he entered the village. On a day like this, he'd have liked to be free to spend an hour or so browsing the shelves, making discoveries, drinking a cup of freshly ground coffee. Maybe there'd be homemade homerty pie on the menu. a legend, um, Scarlin. Yes. It's kind of, it's ne everybody knows of Scarlin Bookshop. I didn't buy this uh, building to make a shop at all. I bought it because I fell in love with it the very first day I arrived in Derbyshire. It's, it's grown into what has become this, you know, this labyrinth of, um, of rooms and books. I'm David Booker, I'm the general manager here at Scarfing Books and I've been here for six years now. Um, only ever intended to come here um, you know, as, a, as a kind of stopgap while I was helping sort of raise my daughter. Um, but the lure at the drawer of the place is just, you know, six years ago and, and you know, I've been here ever since and it's just the most amazing place. Now the bookshop itself was opened in 1974 by um, David Mitchell who's still the proprietor, still owns the bookshop. I thought it's time to put down some roots, so I went down to an estate agent at the very first lunchtime from my job at the county offices and found Scarthin House. And that very evening I came down, saw Mr and Mrs Pepper, and I looked out the window, saw black rocks on the skyline, the pond in front, um, all these rooms and labyrinths of rooms. I thought, fill it with lodgers and we'll have a great time. This was the coal hole where we are now speaking, where one of my lodgers once uh, broke in during the night because he'd forgotten his key and became entrapped among rumbling heaps of coal. I was alerted by the deep cursing and rumbling from above. When I had this empty shop, I thought just as a hobby we'll open a bookshop. There are books piled high in every room, we've got just short of 100,000 titles altogether, and that's split roughly between new and second-hand books. My name's Guy Cooper. I'm responsible for the new books in Scarthin Books. Having been enamoured by books from a very young age, um, I'm well aware of the power of books um, as ways of entering different worlds and of presenting um, new and interesting ideas. Um, and I think the bookshop um, does tend to reflect the passion that uh, all the members of the staff here have for, for books and reading. We have the most amazing staff um, and we're an odd collective um, from all walks of life, all different backgrounds. I send books all over the world. Today I'm going to send a book to Australia and another one to South Africa. I order the children's books. It's great fun looking at all the new releases and we always encourage people to come in and bring their children in. Play groups if they want to come in and do, you know, give a reading or schools if they want to show you know, children what a bookshop looks like. Because not many towns have bookshops anymore unfortunately. Simpson and this is um, Katie, your dog master. <laughs> and we're both, um, we're both freelance artists and uh, we both love this bookshop very, very much indeed. We've been coming here for years for inspiration. So at the moment we are doing up the children's book room. The plan is to finish the ceiling and then start adding. There's a set of things to hang down 
Um, so the ceiling will become a little bit like an upside down pop up book, was what was yes. sort of in our heads. So you look so up and you would be imagined that you'll be standing on the ceiling. So I don't know how that could easily take us a long time. Just it could take us a very, very long time. Yeah. So we may end up working right through the night. But that's okay. I'm sure the dawn will be beautiful as it comes <laughs> through the windows. <laughs> I think it's, um, it's obvious from the minute you set foot in the place that it's run by people who are really, really in love with books. Mm. The thing that struck me when I first came here was all the quotations just in handwriting, you know, handwritten quotations stuck to the walls and all these interesting individual things. The eccentricities that are found you know, throughout the shop um, are very much uh, a mark of Dave, the proprietor. You know, this is, this is his creation. Um, and it's a, it's a very special part of the shop. Um, and that ranges from, you know, bizarre books that you find with messages, secret messages hidden in them to um, bizarre discount. Uh, you, you might qualify if you uh, meet certain criteria, but uh, without giving too much away, because obviously uh, they're there for people to be found. A very wide-ranging bookshop like this to thrive we have to be in a what appears to be a ludicrous situation miles from anywhere <laughs> hidden up a back street 20 miles from the nearest large town and that enables us to thrive in all sorts of different specialities and to provide this wonderful unexpectedness that you may find a treasure in almost any subject We've always prided ourselves on having a book on every conceivable subject under the sun. As opposed to big chains who stock 20 copies of one title, we prefer to stock one copy of 20 titles. So we've always aimed to stock um, a book on every conceivable subject, uh, and we rely on our customers to let us know if there is a subject that they can't find among the new books. We've got an incredible uh, vegetarian vegan cafe here, which you know draws people from far and wide to come and taste the delights. We use a lot of organic and fair trade products. All the soups are usually vegan wherever possible, um, gluten free, and we've got options for most vegetarians, vegans, and gluten free with the meals that we serve. If it's after pub fry up, <laughs> if it's Sunday and you're in Scarthins, <laughs> we host various events, you know, book-related events, with you know a lot of um, well-known local authors who come in and uh, you know frequent, frequent the shop. But also we we do book launches, book signings, um, you know various events with authors, which are. You know, it's fantastic, there's a real buzz to the place, but we also host some of our own events. Things like the Café Philosophique, uh, kind of bi-monthly uh, meeting, um, and we have Conversation Café. Um, and there are various events, sort of village events, which you know, we're at the sort of heart of that, that take place in front of the shop. And this coming weekend we've got the Apple Day Festival. the most eclectic, fabulous place. Completely untypical of a bookshop that I'd never come across before. I'm so proud of this place when I bring visitors from abroad um, because they just can't believe it, it's magical. I've been coming to the bookshop here since it first opened. I still keep coming, I keep as long as I can like, you know, the more or less friends over the years since I've been coming. For me, I'm not 
in a way so interested in selling books as in the bookshop I think as a work of art. I was once uh, accused by Keith Mantell from Derbyshire County Library of really being motivated to, to run a, a library and I think that's what this is, it's a library you can buy a bit of or it's a museum where you're allowed to take away the exhibits um, and in a way making selling the books secondary to have it, making this a good bookshop is what's allowed us to succeed, we, we break all the rules. House of Arabian Nights and Warm Cake. Paper Promise Freedom Church of Childhood. This rural chic winding tower of wild stories surprises as fast as Reeves and Mortimer, treasures winking inside their own chapters. Leave the car, forget the clocks, enter under a tumbling flock of flying Chinese books. Turn off text machine and step over into browsing world. Slow down, take time, look around. This dream palace where people wander over scuffed carpet, worn bare and polished by 38 years of shuffling bookworms. Stop. Look up, like a child again, wonder at the cliffs. Penguins, puffins, bodily head, want to dive inside these seas of print. Be entranced by spines, the great Gatsby, the colour purple, how to be happy. Signs in careful pen, terrorism, fishing, poetry, goats. Books in boxes, crates, on sills, ledges, shelves of pine, ply, anything will do. Extraordinary facts about Derbyshire. Keen books at attention, tired books leaning, retired books asleep on their sides in corners, upstairs to sprawls and piles and walls. Layers everywhere, like Whitehurst strata that hinted at the truth of evolution. The cafe, Beatles print, police report on Byron, antlers, Arga, a swirling exhibition. If I wrote all this, I'd be here all my life. An unravelling conversation about scones, Texas car plates, old menus, psychic news. Conversation every day, but every month, round the long table and avoiding the vine, a topic, schools, holidays, violence in the streets, gentle urbane chatter through the greenhouse quiet. One more floor, cloud of sweet talc, and Dr Johnson in from Litchfield asking Guy for information. A heat map of the Peak District like a painting. Canals, philosophy, weather, music. My Life with Frank Zappa by Pauline Butcher. It all seems such a long way from a riot, like this Tuscan chickpea soup, not Tunisian, and pre-loved fiction, alive with earlier readers, and no three for two each one being a full meal, such a long way from the fast food of Google. In the house of long memory, big story, each book with a thousand thousand children in Australia, Africa, Iran. In the event of a fire, assembly point, wooden seats on the promenade overlooking the pond. <laughs>